everyone on what is an absolutely beautiful day. Beautiful. Mogwai. I'm outside with my boy. He's getting used to the outside as he's still just a little baby. So he's going to go off and have a little explore. Are you going? Off you go. Go eat some grass. So I thought on this very beautiful day, I would take, ow, got splinter. Ooh, I would take advantage of it and do a little video about the pros and cons of living in a village. I have lived in a village for pretty much my entire life. From when I was born to when I was 22, I lived with my parents in a village and then I moved to a town briefly. City? Town. City. It's got an abbey, but it is a city. So I lived in a city for about a year and a half and then I moved out here to this village, which I've been in now for about seven, eight months. And it's lovely. I love a village. I really... I forgot how much I loved a village until you're back there and you just feel I felt so comfortable again. It's just I am a country girl at heart. So I'm going to do a little list. I'm going to do some pros and some cons and we're going to see which one is better. I think I know which one's going to win. Let's start with the pros and obviously a very obvious pro. It's beautiful. It's blooming lovely. Countryside is just absolutely glorious and it's one of the reasons I really love England and why I'd find it quite hard to live anywhere else because our landscape is just mwah, lovely, fantastic. Little cottages, little green fields, big green fields. It's lovely, I you can't beat it. You get a garden, normally, hopefully. You should get a garden. If you move to a village and you don't have a garden, then find a better house, because having a garden is just lovely. I'm sitting outside right now, and I know no one's gonna come in my garden. I hope no one's gonna come in my garden. Whereas in the town or the city, Unless you have a courtyard or a roof terrace or something, you have to go to a park, which is great, I love a park, but there are other people there. And you can't just chillax in your own little way. So, garden, good point. You have village days, if you live in a, a village that likes to be quite social. So you can have a lovely fate or something special. So for example, I got an email from one of the ladies who lives in this village and she asked me if I would be interested in baking something for the Queen's 90th birthday party, which we're all having here in the village in June. And I said, yes, of course, thinking it would just be a batch of brownies. She then came back to me and said, would you like to bake the Queen's birthday cake? It needs to feed 60 to 80 people. Then I was a bit stuck, so I said, I could do cupcakes and decorate them in a jubilee, queeny, birthday type way. And she said yes. So I'm going to be cooking 80 cupcakes soon and I'm definitely going to film that. Mm -hmm. Social side to a village, definite thumbs up. Mm. You get to know your neighbours and I really like that. The slightly not knowing anyone in a city can be a bit daunting I think and as much as you might bump into someone that you know every now and then you really get to know neighbours on a personal level which I think is so lovely I gave them Christmas cards at Christmas and they gave them back and we had Christmas drinks and you just say hello to them in the street and they ask how you are and it's fantastic I really like that side to it because it's just it makes me feel quite comfortable that you're around friendly people you might get the old neighbour that's a bit of a <laughs> but you know, you get that everywhere. You get freedom as a child. That's something that I think is just, you can't buy that. It's so fantastic. I loved that about a village. It was absolutely brilliant when I was younger and I got to the age of maybe 10 or 11 and my mum would just let me and my friends, we could go out and play. Look at this falling blossom beautiful and we could just go out and play and you can go to the park because there was one main road but apart from that it's all fields and just loveliness that you can go and explore and it felt like I was in an Enid Blyton story when I was a child and it was just absolutely I wouldn't change that for the world and that is one of the reasons why I've always known that I want to move back to a village because I want my children to have exactly what I did and go and get muddy knees and get a stinging nettle sting every now and then but I just think that that's great. You can just do whatever you like in Niles, in a village, and I think that that is, I'm trying to think of the word. What's the word? Unrivaled. No, that's not right. If you think of the word, can you let me know? Because I can't think of the word that I mean. It's when you can't, you can't put a price on something, you can't put a stamp on something. It's un, maybe it is unrivaled. Mm. Another really good point is a local pub. You get a really good local pub normally. I worked in the one in my parents' village and it was fantastic. And I've got a really lovely one here as well. And it's just 
it's such a lovely feeling to be able to just walk to your pub and you can walk home afterwards, you can get a bit tiddled, have a bit too much beef and roast potatoes and then come home and it's just down the road. I love that, that's fantastic. So let's move on to the cons of the village. Oh, what can you smell? What can you smell? Oh my boy. Go off again. Off you go. Off you pop. Oh, jumping. Jumping. <laughs> Cat hair. The main con that I found when I was younger was the lack of public transport because my mum was fantastic. She used to take me everywhere and my dad would pick me up from things and I'd have to get the bus sometimes and that was what was really annoying because even though there was a kind of regular bus oh skirts blowing up even though there was a kind of regular bus that went maybe every hour if you were lucky sometimes it just wouldn't turn up the amount of times me and my cousin would wait for the bus and it just wouldn't turn up and so we'd have to ring my mum and say the bus didn't turn up can you come and take us into town and also it's so expensive they're trying to make you use public transport and it costs £7.10 to get into town. Silly, silly. If you live in a popular village or a village that has historical importance, you may have an issue with tourists. My dad found this out once when he was sitting in our sitting room, having a nice little sit down, enjoying the sitting room, and our house was an old shop, so above the door it said the old shop. Anyway, one sunny day, um, we left the door on the latch because my mum was going to and fro, and these tourists just walked in. Oh my goodness, is this the old shop? And my dad was like, no, it's my house and can you leave please? So you know, there are people who go around, they take photos of the front of your house, they just do general touristy things. And I know that we're tourists when we go to other places, but that's just a thing to bear in mind if you live in a very nice, historical, pretty village. Everyone knows everyone else's gossip. This can be an issue if you... Niles, what are you eating? Can cats eat that? Hmm. Everyone knows the gossip of someone, so if somebody has an affair, somebody has a baby, there's always a good neighbour who's got the goss and they will give it to you and then I will give it to someone else and so on and so forth. So that's quite fun if you're not the one that the gossip's about. But you've just got to bear it in mind, if you're thinking about doing anything a little bit naughty, keep it to yourself if you're in a village. Mm-hmm. I think my final con point is the fact that if you're in a village, I find that everybody seems to go to bed or close their doors at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. And so if you get home after that because you've been in a little party or you've been doing something a little bit naughty, then you may find that little heads peep out of curtains and little doors open. And so I used to have to creep home sometimes, slam my car door as quietly as I could. But we had a bell on our front door because it used to be a shop. And therefore, as soon as it dinged, I knew that pretty much most people along that same road would have woken up. I'm a little bit of a hypocrite saying this, to be honest, because I used to do some peeking. If somebody made a noise late at night, I'd peek out my window. So, you know, I can't talk. But anyway, I think that ends my pros and cons list of a village, and I think we can all be pretty sure that the pros have won it. Yes! I knew they were going to, that's why I made this video. <laughs> so if you don't live in a village, I would highly recommend living in one. They are really lovely places to live, and you get some beautiful houses, and beautiful gardens, and some really nice people, if you're lucky. Go and enjoy the rest of this beautiful sunny weather, although by the time this video is up it may well be raining, in which case stay inside, make yourself a cup of tea, and watch a lovely film. But for now, from me and Niles, we say goodbye to you! Goodbye to you!